Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Brothers and sisters, preparing ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, we first call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you healed the sick. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you forgive sinners. Christ, have mercy. Amen. Lord Jesus, you give us your strength to heal us and free us from evil and harm. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins. Bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us, you take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer, you are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, we bring to your altar these offerings of our service. Grant we may honor you with all our mind, to love everyone with truth of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. You ever hear when they ask John the Baptist, you know, are you the prophet? You always wonder what that means. Well, we hear from Deuteronomy early, way back when, in Moses, you know, the time of the uh, Exodus. We're going to hear about it. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to all the people, saying, A prophet like me will the Lord your God raise up for you from among your own kin. To him you shall listen. This is exactly what you requested of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly, when you said, Let us not hear again the voice of the Lord our God nor see this great fire any more, lest we die. And the Lord said to me, This was well said. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their kin, and will put my words into his mouth. He shall tell them that I command him. Whoever will not listen to my words, which he speaks in my name, I myself will make him answer for it. But if a prophet presumes to speak in my name, an oracle that I have not commanded him to speak, or speaks in the name of other gods, he shall die. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I should like you to be free of anxieties. An unmarried man is anxious about the things of the Lord, how he may please the Lord. But a married man is anxious about the things of the world, how he may please his wife, and he is divided. An unmarried woman or a virgin is anxious about the things of the Lord, so that she may be holy in both body and spirit. A married woman, on the other hand, is anxious about the things of the world, how she may please her husband. I am telling you this for your own benefit, not to impose a restraint upon you, but for the sake of propriety and adherence to the Lord without distraction. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. teaching, for he taught them as one having authority, not as the scribes. In their synagogue, there was a man with an unclean spirit. He cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come here to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Jesus rebuked him, said, Quiet, come out of him. The unclean spirit convulsed him with a loud cry and came out of him. All were amazed, asked one another, What is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even unclean spirits, and they obey him. His fame spread everywhere throughout the whole region of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. All were amazed at his teaching. All were amazed. I was wondering, what were we amazed at? What were we amazed at? And I was amazed at uh, last Sunday evening. We had uh, 70 people here, and they were all families with children, and uh, it was our family mass, but it was the enrollment of our sacramental kids. We had the, if I recall correctly, the first, uh, the confirmation over here, the first reconciliation over there, and the first communion down the center off with their parents, with their parents, and with confirmation with their sponsors. Anyways, and God hope they all were here, you know, the, uh, 
hitting our sacraments. We look out and wonder, what's, what's going to happen? What's going on? And it always helps to see that we have children, we have things going on, we have possibilities and strength and amazement. God is doing amazing things, tugging in their hearts, calling them through the Holy Spirit and uh, beckoning them. Uh, last week, um, second, number second note before the homily, last week um, I talked about uh, the statement that uh, was released uh, to uh, our new president. And today, uh, there's also in your bulletin uh, a follow-up that was done by the U.S. Pro, the chairman of Pro-Life Response to President and Vice President's statement on the anniversary of Roe versus Wade, uh, talking about, you know, we strongly urge the, pair, the president to reject abortion and promote life-affirming aid to women in communities of need. And it uh, kind of talks about abortion, if you'd like to see what the, the, the they wrote uh, in that regard. It's in the bulletin. In today's gospel, Jesus said to the possessed man in the synagogue, "Quiet, come out of him." A crisis reveals what's in our hearts, says Pope Francis. A crisis reveals what's in our hearts. For some reason, that made me think about this. What's in our hearts? And Jesus said to this man, come out of him. And um, the things I have to talk about are some from quotes from the Pope are from his new book, uh, Let Us Dream, um, and it's a path to a better future. And it addresses the current situation we're in with the coronavirus and how to respond. Along with the coronavirus, the Pope says, we all have our own personal COVIDs, like illness, Failure of a marriage or of a business, some great disappointment or betrayal, loss of a loved one, problems at school or work. We see these moments, he says, generate attention within us. If we stop and look, we see what's in our hearts. A crisis reveals what's in our hearts, he says. He says, we put on our face masks to protect from a virus we can't see. But what about all those other unseen viruses we need to protect ourselves from? Our hidden pandemics. What is your unseen virus in your heart? What's your unseen virus in your heart? Something to think about, something to ponder. Jesus said to the man in the synagogue, Quiet, come out of him. Again, is there something inside of you that Jesus would like to come out of you? In the gospel, the next thing we hear Jesus say, as I said earlier, all were amazed at Jesus. All were amazed at his power and authority. This miracle in the synagogue was amazing. What's amazing to me about it is the God who previously seemed so far away to the people at the time of Jesus was right there helping him, helping this man personally, one-on-one, -on -one, with God's power, with God's love, freeing him, setting him free, starting a new life without the bondage he had before him. For you too, he can help remove your unseen virus. Name it. Ask him to remove it and change you. I think about this. We think about Jesus' the power. We think about it today, you know, and uh, maybe that's even a scary thing, his power, you know. But when I was standing there just now looking at the candles, um, you know, and as I was listening to Shirley sing that right before the gospel, talk about God is light. And, and the, the power of Jesus is light. And it's different. It's, it's power, all powerful, most powerful. But it's not a scary light. It's a uh, warmth light. Something that surrounds you and uh, frees you and gives you peace. And so, what's your unseen virus you'd like Jesus to remove? Name it. Ask him to remove it and change you. And the next thing we have is the Holy Eucharist. We'll receive it into our very hearts. 
we were going to make a spiritual communion where we come and we adore the Blessed Sacrament. May Jesus and the Holy Eucharist reveal what's in your heart. May he enter your heart. May he then change your heart. We profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men for our salvation came down from heaven, by the Holy Spirit was incarnate, while the Virgin Mary became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With our hope in God and his power and his love, we offer our prayers. Our response will be, hear us, O Lord. For Pope Francis, Bishop Persico, and all church leaders, that they may use their authority as Jesus did, to free, to heal, and to build up community, we pray. Here is the Lord. Lord. For leaders of nations, that God grant them wisdom to best address the challenges they face, and thereby build a better world, we pray. Here is the Lord. Lord. For the grace to be grounded in God, that each of us may seek God first in our lives and love others with the love with which God first loves us. We pray. Here Here is the Lord. For healing and strength, that God will heal the sick, curb the transmission of the coronavirus, sustain all who care for the sick, and guide those who are working to administer the vaccine. We pray. Here is the Lord. For all who are experiencing deep loneliness, that God will help them recognize a purpose for their life and give them a vision as to how to live their life more fully, we pray. Hear us, Lord. For all who are bound by evil, that the Spirit of Christ may release them from addictions, greed, and vengeance, vengeance, so that they may live in the freedom of God's children, we pray. Hear us, Lord. For all who are suffering economically, that God will guide the unemployed to new work, bring relief to those who face losing their homes, and open new resources for those who do not have enough food. We pray. Hear us, Lord. Lord. For our community churches, especially Pastor Richard Bennett and the members of the Down County Baptist Church. We also pray for Father Felix and the members of San Antonio, our sister parish in the Yucatan that the Spirit of God will renew them and guide them in their service, we pray. Hear us, Lord. Lord. For our beloved deceased, especially for Father Chuck Schmidt, who passed away recently, and for Barney Hornung, who we remember in a special way in this liturgy, and for all who have died recently, especially for those who have died from the coronavirus. May they experience the love and mercy of Jesus and rest in his heavenly peace. We pray. Hear us, Lord. Lord. And for any special intentions that you would like to voice at this time. We 
Oh Lord, we bring our prayers to you. Help us in our weaknesses and give us your strength and grace and answer to these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thankful for anybody, any, all of you that give to St. Mark's in any way. We're very grateful and thankful. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we've received this bread, we offer you fruit of the earth, the work of human hands become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for it is through your goodness that we have received this wine. We offer you the fruit of the vine, the work of human hands, become our spiritual drink. Pray my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, the mighty Father. O oh Lord, we bring to your altar these offerings of our service. Be pleased to receive them, we pray, and transform them into the sacrament of our redemption. Through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty, our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in you we live and move and have our being, and while in the body we not only experience the effects of your care, but even now we possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised Jesus from the dead, we hope to have an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. So with angels we praise you in joyful celebration we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall. They become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, entered willingly into his passion, he himself took bread and giving you thanks. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks. 
gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection we offer you Lord the bread of life the chalice of salvation giving thanks you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we be brought together in unity by the Holy Spirit remember Lord your church spread throughout the world bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope Lawrence our Bishop Bishop Donald all the clergy Remember all of our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. With the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Mark, with St. James, and all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty, Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and for my divine teaching of Jesus, we pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. By the help of your mercy, keep us always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Kingdom, power, glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will. You who live and you who reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of our Lord Jesus be with all of you.
Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. How blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. Nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, O Lord, that through this help to eternal salvation, true faith may ever increase. Through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Okay, we've got all kinds of things going on this week. I'm the Blessing of Throats is on Wednesday, and uh, Wednesday, Blessing of Throats, we'll have it at the 815 Mass at the end, and um, at the 5, let's see, on Wednesday, let's get, this is, I'm sorry, Wednesday at 815 and Wednesday evening, um, about like quarter to six, if you come a little bit before six o'clock, um, we have um, the Holy Hour at, at six o'clock, it'll be right before the Holy Hour, so probably ten minutes to six. And... Uh, then blessed candles will be available in the evening, at the evening time. Oh uh, yes, it'll be a general blessing, meaning it won't be individual because of the COVID-19. I'll have the candles and we'll give you a general blessing over everyone. First Friday then occurs on Friday, so we get Adoration, Blessed Sacrament Wednesday uh, in the evening and Friday all day long with the Mass at uh, 8 o'clock and at 5.15, 5 o'clock, with benediction at about 10 minutes to 5 on Friday, Parishal, pastoral councils on Thursday at 4.30. And um, next week we'll be have the, uh, believe it or not, we're going back to Catholic Services Appeal in 2021, uh, and, and the sign, uh, not the sign-up, the promotion will be next week, and two weeks with the 13th and 14th of February will be the sign of Sunday. The Lord be with you. God's blessings upon you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorify the Lord by your life. Amen. Thanks be to God. Our sending forth an invisible Savior, who will you?